the zoo caboose got loose. Wow! So much has happened since the zoo caboose made its way to several of the small towns in Washington State. Four animals are loose in the town of Issaquah. The train engineer is now leaving the station to retrieve the zoo caboose, unaware that the animals are not waiting inside. worried about the lost zoo animals, but now developed a plan to get them all back safe and sound to the zoo caboose. The crow spoke with the rhino, telling him the way to go back. Even though the rhino was nearsighted, he could still follow instructions. The crow said, go back the way you came, follow the sidewalk, and I will fly with you to make sure you get there. The rhino was amazed at how intelligent the crow was, and began walking back to the real zoo caboose. Now the crow flitted about above and below the treetops, watching and escorting the rhino back. Even though the rhino was large and heavy, he was very quick and kept a good running pace traveling on the sidewalk. The rhino said, do not worry about me. I will stay here with the zoo caboose. Go find the others and bring them back. The last we saw of the hungry bear, he was heading down the trail to the farmer's market. With the scent of food in his nostrils, nothing could stop him from his breakfast. Well, almost. As he headed down the trail, he came upon some tourists taking pictures. When the tourists saw the bear, one of them dropped the camera, and then the running began, first for the tourists, and secondly for the bear. The bear turned around on the trail and began running away. The bear thought he was running very fast, but it was not fast enough for the tourists. The crow was looking for the elephant. Finding something so large and so loud should be easy, but sometimes you have to ask others for help, like that dog. The crow was so excited he began chattering. The dog ran away, but the crow begged, Wait! Have you seen my friend? The dog halted when he heard the mournful cry. The dog asked, did he have a large snake tail in front and a small rope tail in back? How funny! The crow laughed and said, yes, but that is not a tail in front, it is his trunk. Yes, said the dog, he was heading for the farmer's market. Thank you, said the crow, and off he flew. Help, cried the elephant, I am stuck between two trees. The elephant was about to cry out again when the crow found him and asked, What are you doing here? The elephant replied, First I was looking for the tiger, got lost, then I thought I smelled the bear and followed his scent here. I didn't take the pathway, and now I'm stuck between these two trees. Meanwhile, the train was proceeding back to Issaquah to pick up the zoo caboose, and it was getting closer. If the zoo caboose was found empty, the engineer would be in big trouble because he was entrusted with the safe travel of everyone, including the zoo animals. The crow was frightened when he heard a noise on the pathway and flew next to the elephant. It was the bear who had returned when he heard the elephant cry for help. The crow flew back down to the pathway to greet the bear. The bear responded, Good to see you, my friend. The crow returned to the problem at hand and suggested the elephant breathe out slowly and go backwards to get unstuck. The elephant did as the crow advised and was soon unstuck. What a wise crow you are, the bear said, and the elephant agreed. They were very fortunate to have such a wise friend and followed the crow away towards the zoo caboose. The tiger was still lost. As you remember, the tiger had been the first one out of the zoo caboose and had many adventures since that time. The last time we saw the tiger was when Walter heard the fence crash. 
and saw the tiger in the neighbor's yard. But we did not get a chance to tell you about Walter's wife. When Walter asked his wife to take a look, the tiger had already left the yard through the open gate. She laughed and said, All I see is a crow. A cougar was out and about the hills of Issaquah. Seeing the tiger, the cougar said, Halt! Who are you that walks among the mountains of Issaquah? The tiger turned and said, I am the tiger from the zoo. The cougar continued, I have never heard of a zoo, but I have heard of a tiger. You are the first tiger that I have ever seen. We have a mountain named for you. Would you like to see it? Of course I would, the tiger said. It is down this hill and across the highway. I will go with you to make sure that you don't get lost. I don't need any help. I found my way here, didn't I? The tiger was too proud and would not admit that he was still lost and getting further away from the zoo caboose. The last thing the cougar said was, if you do get lost, just remember to go back the way you came. The cougar followed him at a distance just to see a real tiger in Tiger Mountain, but she made sure that the tiger did not see her. The tiger was greatly honored that the city of Issaquah had named a mountain after him. He thought to himself, at the zoo I have only a small area to roam, but here I would have a whole mountain as my domain. The crow landed close to the cougar and asked if she had seen the tiger. The cougar said yes and he is just a short distance from here. Are you from the zoo? I would like to see one. The crow had to find the tiger before the train came back for the zoo animals. The cougar decided to follow the tiger and the crow to see if she could find out more about the zoo. Walter had been busy during this time repairing his neighbor's fence. He was so proud of his work that he remarked to his wife, Now this fence is strong enough to keep out an elephant. Meanwhile, the train and the zoo animals were approaching the zoo caboose. Fortunately, the animals were closer and would be able to board the caboose before the train arrived. <laughs> The train engineer was delighted to find the zoo caboose and all the animals waiting safely inside. But he was baffled to find the door to the caboose was unlocked. He locked the door, hitched the caboose to the train, and began the journey back to the zoo. The zoo caboose returned safely. All the flamingos began gossiping. One flamingo said, I have it on good authority that the zoo caboose travels through a thick jungle of buildings called cities. While another challenged, I too have heard about their travels from a good authority, and these cities have many inhabitants in them. The gossip had both literal and figurative wings, and many fanciful things were rumored. One flamingo said, I heard that the rhino got a haircut. Another said, the elephant went all over the city trumpeting loudly. Ooh, how annoying, as they honked in agreement. Yet another flamingo said, Did you know that all of them got lost? To which another flamingo replied, Yes, but I knew it before you did. You should know that there are three types of animals at the zoo. The animals that make things happen, like the zoo caboose animals, the ones that know what happened, like the flamingos, and then there are those animals that don't even know what happened. The only animals in the zoo that did not know the zoo caboose had returned were the otters. They enjoyed sliding through the water, playing tag with each other. When asked if they would like to travel outside of the zoo in the zoo caboose, their response was, no, we otter not do that. Otherwise, while we are gone, the elephants would swim in our pond. The 
communities in Issaquah are still looking for the bear, rhino, tiger, and elephant. They do not know that the animals came from and returned to the zoo safely. They even sent emergency vehicles into neighboring towns to find them. Look, there goes one right now. Stay tuned for more adventures of the Zoo Caboose.